Hi everyone, I hope you are having a great Monday or whichever day you are watching this video. This will be the makeup look I will be showing you how to do today. I received requests to make a video for beginners, so I will be providing a more elaborate explanation for all the techniques that I'm using and going more in depth as far as why I'm doing it and how those techniques can help enhance your already beautiful faces. If you are more advanced, that's okay. You can still watch this video. You will still be able to see how I do this look, but you are more than welcome to fast forward through some of the parts because the video might be a little bit long. All right, so let's get started. For foundation today, I'm gonna be using NARS Sheer Glow. This is in the shade Medium 1.5 Velaris, and I am using the Luxie Lush 532 brush with this. So for anyone who's new, foundation is, I think, one of the most important steps in my makeup routine. If you have a even complexion, I think that really enhances the way your makeup looks as well as how the makeup will look overall. A couple of things that, that I do wanna mention is just try to figure out what you're looking for as far as coverage and find a product that works for your skin type. You can get anything from BB creams, which are tinted moisturizers, or you can get like a very sheer coverage foundation if you don't need a lot and you just want to even out your complexion in case you have any redness. Or if you're like me and you like more fuller coverage, you can use something that is buildable and you can apply a couple layers of that. Even though this particular foundation that I'm using is called Sheer Glow, it's actually a, a medium to full coverage foundation and it's quite buildable and it gives you a really nice natural glowy effect without being looking too cakey on your skin. This is a really good one. It's one of my all-time favorites. I tend to go to this all the time. When trying to find a good foundation, I really do recommend going to a store like Sephora or Ulta where you can kind of try it out, feel it on your skin, make sure the fragrance or anything doesn't bother you. As it's gonna be applied all over your face, you wanna make sure you, you don't have any harsh allergic reactions or anything like that towards the foundation. If anything, I would say splurge on your foundation. And it doesn't mean that just because it's expensive and it's a name brand, mean that it's gonna be good for your skin, but make sure to research on the ingredients and that there aren't anything in there that you might have a harsh reaction to. Always make sure that you are taking it down your neck so that you don't have a floating head, I like to call. <laughs> and sometimes I even like to go towards my ears. It's good to remember that you did that, so when you do take your makeup off, you can hit those spots as well. I like to really make sure and blend everything out. If I wanna add any more coverage, I pat it on so I'm not moving the product around. So if I look a little puffy today, I didn't get a very good night's rest last night, but it's nothing some makeup can't fix. Next, I'm gonna be doing concealer. This is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC20. For concealer, especially if it's gonna go under your eyes, which that's where I mainly put it, you can get concealer that's the same color as your skin tone and put it in areas where you have blemishes or where you have more darker pigmentation that you wanna cover up. But the main reason that I use concealer is for under eye circles, any darkness under there, and mainly just to brighten. So I will go ahead and use a concealer that's about two to even three shades lighter than my actual skin tone. And when I put it on, it does look a little bit uh, contrasty, but once we go in with blush and contour, it will all blend really nicely. I like to take a wet beauty or a moist beauty blender. I find that that just helps give the most natural effect without not making the concealer too cakey on the eyes. I like to pat it on because if you drag, you're gonna end up removing that foundation that we have just applied and we want to concentrate the concealer in this particular area, so the patting motion really helps. I played soccer for eight years, so I 
have a lot of freckles that just came out in my 20s and I find that they're mainly right here under my eyes so I will take my concealer down a little bit to cover that up and there's so many different concealers out there that you can try I really recommend this particular one that I'm using under eyes but I will say that it is highly pigmented and very full coverage so if you're looking for something lighter I would go for more of a sheer coverage concealer which will still help even you out under your eyes, but it just won't look as thick. Now, I pretty much have my base on. This is where I like to put my brows on. I will go ahead and do that. I already have a pretty in-depth tutorial on how I do my eyebrows, so click this little plant here and you can go see that video. Before we move on to eyeshadow, one thing that I love to do is apply primer. The one I'm using today is MAC Cosmetics Soft Ochre. So there are several reasons why you would want to use a primer. One main one being that to help the shadows stay in place all day. Whether that be because you tend to have oilier eyelids, whether it's, it's a hot day, or if you have lids that like to fold onto itself like mine. Another reason that I like to use primer is that it really helps the colors that you will be using on your eyes come out much more pigmented and appear its true color. And I'm just using a Real Techniques domed shadow brush to apply that all over. And primers tend to be more wet to cream products. That's why using a synthetic brush works really well. For eyeshadow, I will be using Makeup Geek Cosmetics today. Before I start any look, no matter if it's going to be very dramatic or natural, I always like to go over with a eyeshadow that's about the same color as my skin tone. Sometimes the primer can make your eyelids a little bit sticky, so this will help mattify it even more and make an even texture for when you're blending. And this step really, really just helps with blending in my opinion, so that all your shadows blend into each other really beautifully and look flawless. This is Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek Cosmetics and I will be using that on a MAC 227 brush and I will apply that all over my lid. I won't go all the way up to my brows but I will go very close to the brow bone. I like using a large paddle brush like this. It makes it really efficient to apply eyeshadow all over your lids. Okay, and once that's blended in nicely, I will take a smaller flat brush similar to that. This one is a Sigma brush. I'm not sure what the number is, but I'm going to take that same eyeshadow and I will apply that to the bottom lash line. The next color I'm going to be using is Cocoa Bear by Makeup Geek. So I will take that at the outer corner of my eye, closest to my lash line, and I will blend that out and into my crease. You can see how that adds a lot of dimension to my eye and depth. Right now it looks a little silly, but once you've got eyeliner on, it looks really nice. Makeup starts to look a little scary before it starts to look good. So always be patient, because who knows, it will most likely end up looking really good. Once I've got some depth in my eyes, I am gonna take that very first brush that we used and the first color as well, Peach Smoothie. I'm gonna take a little bit of that on the brush and just really blend those two together. I'd say one thing to really master would be blending. The reason why I am kind of dragging this out is because I know I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a winged liner today, so you don't want your eyeshadow to just stop and your wing to come out further. It just doesn't look very nice to me. Taking that smaller shader brush and Coco Bear again, I will be putting that under my lash line. Just the outer two thirds. What that's gonna do is really open up your eyes and kind of lift them up. If you go too heavily with darker colors near the inner portion of your eye, that will close them out more than they are and may not enhance your eye shape. But there are certain makeup looks, like a halo eyeshadow technique, that looks really nice. No matter how beautiful and proportionate somebody's face may be, 
their eyes are going to be different. And that's one thing that you'll have to kind of practice on your own eyes and see how to adjust your eyeshadow, your eyeliner, depending on your eyes. One thing I will share is my eyes are also very different from each other. This eye in particular is smaller than this eye, but this one has a larger lid space before, the, before it starts creasing and it's lifted up a little bit more where this eye is bigger and it's more hooded. Those are all things you want to take into consideration when you are adjusting your eyeshadow or your eyeliner so that both eyes look the same. Most people will not notice that my eyes are different. It's just something that you can kind of stay in touch with, I guess. It's something that you can just discover for yourself and it will just kind of help you learn more about makeup and how to improve the way makeup looks on your own eyes. I'm going to be doing a black winged liner for this look. This is the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper. Eyeliner is something that can be really tricky for many people and it was for me when I was starting out. So what I always like to do is start in short and small strokes. Now that I have gotten better at it, I can do it a lot faster but I will go ahead and show you the steps. I always start closest to my lash line and I will just start doing small short strokes. It doesn't have to be neat right here. And then I will I will start becoming a little bit more precise as we go towards the inner corner. So just lay the brush or the tip of your eyeliner and drag. And depending on how thick or how thin you want your eyeliner, apply a certain amount of pressure that would uh, be applicable. You might notice that some days I will I will do a thinner liner and some days I will wing it out even more or do thicker and it all just depends on how you want your makeup to look that day. Today the focus is more on my lips so I'm not going to go too thick or too winged out but I will be putting on false lashes so I will wing it out a little bit more than if I weren't wearing lashes and that is something to keep in mind because lashes will really almost magnify your your eyes. I like to kind of dramatize everything just a little bit more so that they um, are more cohesive. For the wing part, I like to draw a little line out towards my eyebrows first. Then I connect the end of this line to the rest of the eyeliner we've drawn here. All you have to do now is just fill in any blank areas. That's, that's the majority of the work. Now what you can do is if you want to take the eyeliner a little bit lower here on the ends, you can add more there and just adjust it to your liking. Alright, so now that I have both liners on, I have adjusted the two so that they look the most similar. What I'm going to do is use a nude eyeliner for my waterline under here. This is just the Tarte Inner Rim Liner. White could work, nude works too. I like using nude because it's not as harsh as white, but white also looks really nice. What this is going to do is just make my eyes look bigger. Right now, I feel like the bottom lash line is missing a little something. So I'm going to go back in with the Coco Bear shade and this is the Dalian Tools 755 brush. I'm going to take that right under my lash line here just to give it a little bit more oomph. I will also be taking a black eyeshadow. This is Current by my Makeup Geek Cosmetics on the same brush and I will Apply that closest to the lash line, the very outer corner of my eyes. This just helps bring the look together and make everything look more cohesive. This is pretty much it for the eyes. You can leave it like this or if you want to clean up your liner, and what I mean by that is you can kind of see where my eyeliner ends here, where you can see a little bit eyeshadow. If you want to clean that up, it looks really nice. You don't have to. I'm going to take a Dalian Tools 936 brush. This is just a concealer brush with just a little bit of foundation, not concealer. Or you can use concealer that's the same color as your skin tone. And I'm just going to go close to that liner and clean it up a little bit. And you can see how that makes 
pretty nice difference and if you don't want to do that you what you can always do actually is apply a little bit of scotch tape make sure you're not allergic to the adhesive or like medical tape just kind of remove the tackiness a little bit apply it on your hands and then you can apply that right across here and do basically all the steps that I did and once you're done you can just take that off and you will have the same clean line. I'm gonna curl my top lashes. This is a pretty important step I think sometimes I like to skip it because I don't have a lot of lashes to begin with but if your lashes stick out straight kinda of like mine do even if you're wearing false lashes it helps to kinda of lift them up so that you don't have two different lash angles from from your side profile. That helps blend your lashes into the fake ones if you will be wearing them. For mascara, I'm using the Better Than Sex Too Faced Mascara. This is my all-time favorite. I will also apply in my lower lash line. I don't have a lot of lashes down there either, but I always feel like it makes a big difference to just kind of coat the ones that I have left. <laughs> And I will do two coats. The lashes I'm going to be using today are the same ones I used in my last video. This is just two pairs stacked on top of each other that I just got wholesale from a manufacturer. And the reason why I like these so much is because they both have an invisible band which make it much more flexible and comfortable on the eyes. And this is a really awesome tweezer that I love using for applying eyelashes. This is by iMemo Cosmetics. Just the shape of it works really great for me. Once I've got a really thin coat of blue on there, and I always like to use black since I have black liner on, I take it on the tweezer and I will just lay it So here are the eyes with lashes. <laughs> I want to add just a little something to the inner corner of my eyes. I'm taking Makeup Geek uh, eyeshadow in Bling and just like a domed shader brush and I'll be putting that in the inner corner of my eyes and you can even put that at the arch of your brow bone too. Now that we're done with our eyes, you can tell that my complexion looks very flat and I'm just all one color. So I want to bring a little bit more life to my skin. Whether you like to just apply a tiny bit of bronzer or you like to do the entire contour routine, it is always really nice to give your skin some color. Today I'm going to be using the Smashbox Bronze Lights Bronze Lights Sunkissed Matte Bronzer on a Sigma SS168 brush. You want to add color where the sun would naturally tan your skin. For example, the, our forehead here, that's the highest point of our face, and the sun most likely always hits that directly. So I like to put some bronzer there. In your cheekbone, this really helps make your face look slimmer if that's something that you want to do. And I will add a little bit of color here around my chin and I'll even take it down to my neck so that it still matches the rest of my face. Now I have a really small nose but right now because the foundation has blanked out any shading in my skin tone on my nose area it's making it in the camera look very wide as well as very flat. So to add more dimension I'm going to take that same brush and I'm just going to go on either side of my nose and there's a more elaborate way you can do this but just if you're doing your makeup really fast day to day that's something you can do to kind of just liven up your skin because the lip is where I want most of the attention to be I don't want to bring a lot of attention to my cheeks or my eyes completely this is the hourglass ambient lighting palette I'm gonna be using this very bottom shade today on a Mac 129 just on the apples right here so when you smile these are your apples and not very close to your nose but here on the ends of your apples and blend into that bronzer so you can tell how that has 
sort of almost lifted this cheekbone up as well as giving it some life and color. Just like eyeshadow, blending is really important, actually even more important when working with your skin so that it can look as natural as possible. If I want to tie that blush color in a little more, I'll take whatever's remaining on the brush and I'll actually just brush it over my temples and just along my jawline so that everything flows together really well. And this part is optional, but I love highlighting. It's like one of my new obsessions. This is the Becca Cosmetics Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal. And on that same 129 brush, I'm just going to take a little bit and go above where we place that blush. Sort of on the ends of where we put that concealer. This is going to just reflect a lot of light here and it's going to make it look really beautiful. It's hard to tell in camera, but it looks really beautiful when you're outside in the sunlight. It gives your skin a really pretty healthy glow. If you're having a day like me today where your skin just doesn't look its best and you want to bring some liveliness, some really beautiful glow, shimmering highlighters are the best. So we will move on to lips. Today the, the color I'm going for is a very dark, vampy look. You can do nude, you can do pink. Because you don't have a whole lot going on with your eyes, you can do pretty much um, any lip color that you want. So I just want to do something fun. If you want your lipstick to last longer and to look more opaque and more vibrant, I like adding a lip liner first. It doesn't have to be the exact same color. It can be something lighter, darker. It can be something that you want to mix with your lipstick. It all depends on what you want to do. And since the main reason I'm using lip liner today is to help my lipstick stay on longer, I'm just going to use a color that's similar but not exactly the same. This is MAC Mahogany Lip Pencil. Also, lip liner is going to give you a really nice even line around. Sometimes lipsticks like to bleed depending on how the texture is. Lip liners can prevent that. And I'm actually going to fill in the rest of my lips with it. This part doesn't have to be neat. So once we've done that, I'm going to go in with the color that we actually want to use. This is the NYX Simply Vamp Lip Cream. It does like to move around a lot, so that is why I used the lip liner to help kind of leave it in place. This is not a kind of lipstick that you want to wear if you're going out for dinner because, trust me, it will get all over your face. <laughs> it does for me. This is in the color Aphrodisiac. Once we've got the shape that we want and the color that we want, I'm going to take a little bit of the foundation we used earlier on a Dallium Tools 714 brush. And I'm just going to go around the very outside of the lips to just clean everything up a little bit more. Alright, so that is pretty much the look. I always read all your comments, whether it's on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook, or on my Instagram. So keep those suggestions coming, and I will try to add them to the list of videos I have planned for the future. If you guys would like to connect with me on social media, I will include links to my Facebook and Instagram. Both are Marla Neandorch. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please feel free to leave questions if you have any down in the comments and I will try to get back to you. But other than that, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye!